Josh Green here for Tugs and Tires with Ted Everts. Uh, Ted, not the Christmas you would have wanted, but uh, I hear you've uh, you've been taking the time off and, and relaxing and enjoying yourself a little bit. Yeah, obviously missing the World Championships is a massive blow. Like I've been there the previous three World Championships, so not making it four in a row was very frustrating. But on the other side of it, I haven't had a great year last year, so all, in all honesty. I didn't deserve to have a spot there. But, yeah, the time off was just nice just to relax over Christmas. Obviously, not the normal Christmas we were all used to, like massive family and whatever. But at the same time, we just got to take everything as it comes right now. Yeah. Well, what's it like to watch the uh, the World Championship on telly when you've been there the last three years? Is it thinking, I should be there? Or are you just thinking, you know what, next year will come around? It was frustrating, definitely. Um, but on the other side of it, it was kind of like, it makes me want to work harder for it. And it also felt like in the back of my mind that my career's kind of gone backwards a few steps because, like I say, I've been on, I mean, I've just finished my fourth year on the tour or fifth. Like, I've played five years on the tour, but one without a tour card. Um so it kind of felt like going back to like my first year again with how I was playing and kind of like just missing out on stuff and whatever. But yeah, it just kind of made me work harder for it. Yeah. Do you feel like now, 12 months on, you'll be you'll be in a better position? And do you feel like now mentally after missing the world, you're probably, you, you want to be there more than you ever have before? Yeah, once you get a taste for it, it's horrible not to be there. So, I mean, I've already started putting in more hours this year than I probably have previously. Um, like Normally, I'll do two hours a day, three hours a day, and then still have a few days off and whatever in between. But since the start of this year, I've been like proper determined with myself, being like, no, you're not missing this again. Like, Get on with it and be more professional with it. Mm. In terms of the rest of your year last year, the, the results probably weren't what you wanted on, on the Pro Tour, but what, what positives can you take from, from 2020? Uh, to be honest, I started quite well. Um, I was throwing still what I was the previous year and carried on from throwing like mid to high 90s, few low tons, but I was losing with them this time. And I think that took a bit of a knock just by going out. Damn, what have, like, what have I got to do? Like, I'm not really changed too much. And I was losing 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and I was throwing like 100, 97s, 98s. I'm thinking, come on, like, one of these results have got to turn my way. And then obviously March and April kind of hit lockdown. And I just kind of carried on with losing a bit of weight and changing mindset, really. So, I mean, I'm four stone down from where I was at the start of last year now. And Honestly, feeling great, just having to tweak a few bits of equipment right now just to try and now find what fits me now rather than what was 12 months ago. So, yeah, just it's been a bit of a playing around kind of period for me right now. I was going to say, I've seen on Twitter, you've been out on your bike most weeks and, and getting the exercise. And is that a really important thing mentally during this sort of time? Uh, for me, definitely. Uh, I mean, obviously, everyone's different, so it's going to be different for other people and that but for myself I feel like when I'm out on my bike out walking running doing whatever just trying to keep the mind clear more than anything I just feel good in myself so then like most mornings I'll be up and about doing something outside exercising mm. uh, and then come back have some food chill out for half an hour an hour tops and then by lunchtime or just after lunchtime I'm straight on the board until then dinner's coming around now rather than messing about too much with other stuff and getting distracted. You say you, you're having to relook at your, your darts and sort of change them up a little bit. Are you start, yeah. Do you notice a difference with the, the, the weight of yourself and you, you needing to, to change the darts slightly then? It was more the stance that I've been struggling with. Um, okay. I've been much of a leaner or anything, but when I was throwing sort of when we started to come back after the first and the second lockdowns, I was still using the exact same equipment and stuff, but I weren't having the power to quite get them there and stuff. So, I mean, I've had a little bit of a tweak and um, Unicorn have been brilliant with me and just adapted a few things for me and instantly done so as well. So, massive shout out to them for doing so, like that for me. Um, but the new ones right now seem to be going like better because I, after sort of 
August sort of time, I was throwing like high 70s and 80s. And if I was throwing in the 90s, I was happy again. Like, I was thinking, this isn't where I need to be. I need to be another 20 points from where I was throwing right now. Um, and then played the Winter Series and the World Championship Qualifier with um, the New Darts. And I think I had in the seven, uh, six or seven events that we played, I think I had one, maybe two under 90 in averages and a couple were then pushing up towards the higher 90s as well. So I was thinking, OK, there must be something better for me with this and having to play about and stuff like that, really. So it's just taking it as it comes and having a little play and working with it more than anything. Yeah, and you said earlier about the Pro Tour at the start of the year, you were playing some decent darts, but maybe not quite getting the results. Is that more of a a hit of confidence when you're playing well and not getting the results and would you rather hit an 80s average and, and get the win there? Uh, obviously I'd always take the win over a loss yeah, but this, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm one of them I, I'm very critical of my own performance and mm. I mean anything under 90 I get really really frustrated at because in my head I'm thinking I know I can throw some pluses high 90s consistently I did the year before and I think I had something like a 96-ish running average for the year like the previous year I was thinking, this is what I should be doing right now. And I mean, in the previous year, I was throwing some into like 107s, 106s and stuff like that. So I'm thinking, you've got the game. Just don't, I need to be less critical of myself more than anything. And just maybe add a little bit more enjoyment back into the game. Don't get me wrong, I do love it. But at the same time, like I say, I get very frustrated with myself. Do you think that's because the pressure you put on yourself? Because obviously... I'm not sure if you, you still work or not, but there's a lot of money in darts now and there's a lot of pressure yeah. on the shoulders of the professionals to, to earn the money when they're on the tour, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the money's a big thing. and I, I mean, I haven't been working now for a couple of years because um, obviously I did a full chefing course, qualified chef and stuff. So for me, it's the hours for a chef are not very hand-in-hand -hand with darts because it's all evening and weekends for both. So... Yeah, I mean, money might play a little part in the back of the head or anything, but it's nothing like at the front of my conscience or anything thinking about it. Um, but obviously, it must be it must be in there somewhere. But yeah, yeah. So just looking forward to to twenty twenty one. Then, I mean, what are the goals for you this year? I think the the next time we'll see you on TV is probably the UK Open. But um, what do you want to do in twenty twenty one? Just get back to performing how I should be. Really. Um, mm -hmm. Like I say, the previous year I was, I felt really, really good and confident in any game I was going into. Made my first quarter final, which was on a European tour, so that was fun. Won the development tour, was was playing really, really good stuff consistently. Uh, so just getting back to being consistently where I want to be, um, and then results to come with them. So that's that's more the plan than anything. And I feel like I need to have a bit of a kick on in a bit of a major this year as well. I feel. Now going into like a sixth year, it has to be something to come out of it for me. Do you feel like you've now fully sort of um, transitioned, I guess is the word, from development tour now into the to the senior ranks? I feel like I have, yeah. Um, maybe, like I say, performances last year didn't show that, but performances that I have had there and wins and some results that I've had, definitely. I mean... When I've played in like a Grand Slam qualifier, when I qualified for that, I didn't feel like anyone was going to touch me. And that was, yeah, not with your Michael Van Goins and stuff like that. But at the same time, I mean, I beat Johnny Clayton 5-0 in that. I beat Gerwin Price 5-2 in it. Someone else 5-0. I think it was Jeffrey de Graff. And then to qualify, Mike Zordrick 5-1. And they were comfortable victories. And I felt really strong and comfortable. And then my first World Championships, the qualifier, opened up the day with 107 average winning games, five threes, five fours, throwing tons. And I'm thinking, this is what we like. Like, I know it's in there to push on and stuff, but I feel like it needs to happen more regularly this year for sure. Yeah, the development tour has played a big part in your career. I mean, you're the most um, decorated development, development tour players we've probably seen in the PDC. Is yeah. there anybody that you've played over the last few years that's still on development tour that, that you think could sort of replicate what you've done over the past few years? Uh, Still on it. Uh, I mean, maybe... I mean, you've always got to look at the people that are on the tour already. So you've yeah. always got to look at Brad Brooks. Yes, he hasn't managed to quite get over the line yet, but he's had a few finals now. So obviously the experience for him's 
just going to have to turn eventually because he's more than capable of, we've seen he's won the actual world youth, let alone in development tour himself. So you have to watch out for someone like him. And then some of the youngsters like coming through, I mean, Keane Barry, no fear, absolutely rapid and hits everything. I've played him, I think, three or four times this year and I think I've only managed to get over the line against him once, maybe twice. And I mean, he's already started to get a couple under his belt and I think he's only 17, maybe 18. So another five or six years for him to go. So there's no reason he can't catch me and then see who else comes onto the scene because there's always somebody new every year that comes onto the development or you think, okay, you're quite handy. And then they do actually quite progress on. So yeah, it'll be good to see. I mean, going into my final year, I just want to enjoy it now and uh, have a laugh and maybe pick up a few more. So we'll see what happens with that. Any aims in, in there for how many more you can get on the development tour? Try and extend your lead? <laughs> uh, I think I'm at 13 at the moment, so definitely two. There's definitely going to be two as long as we get a full tour. Um, I mean, if I can push for a seven, I've had a eight in a year, so if I can sneak a seven and reach 20, I'll be over the moon. But to be honest, I'll be happy with two titles uh, to reach 15, nice round number, and then uh, the World Youth just to top it off. Oh, brilliant. Uh, well, thank you very much for your time, Ted, and we uh, we look forward to seeing you on the TV and on the development tour sometime soon. Thank you very much. Cheers, Billy.